Well, well, well. Genshin Impact 2. Point oh. Not Genshin Impact 2, but Update 2. Point oh. Anyway, where do I even start? We got an expansion of the map, three new characters, two new Arcan quests, two new story quests, new element for the traveler, new events, new bosses, new domains, new artifacts, new weapons, new puzzles, new Catherine, new waifus, I can't even keep track. You guys get the point. This update definitely brought some very interesting new features and especially a great continuation to the main story of the game. So what is going on guys, it's Sage here and welcome back to another installment of an update and review, this time for version 2.0. Alright, I'm gonna be honest, this version didn't really have the best events in my opinion since they focused pretty much everything on the new features. That's okay though, we did get a few new interesting ones in this update. First one being Thunder Sojourn. Being the first major event this update, Thunder Sojourn provides us with new minigames and a free 4 star character being Beido. This event introduces us to a new mechanic that is the Electrograna, which helps us both in and off battles. And of course, in classic MiHoYo fashion, last part of the event, we got ourselves facing with the new Perpetual Mechanical Array boss. There aren't really that much into the boss fight since there aren't any buffs that are provided from the event itself, but nonetheless, not a bad event at all. 3.5 out of 5. Next up is a rerun of the old Lost Riches event, which gives us one of four Sea Lie partners. This one was particularly good because it's not just a rerun, but also somewhat of a remaster of the original event back in version 1.2, with the addition of new puzzles and of course the event being an Inazuma. Overall, a pretty decent event. 3 out of 5. Now for my favorite event of all time, still, till this day, Theater Mechanicus. And it's back with new and improved gameplay, with the most notable being the Animo and Crackshot Towers being the two most overpowered ones in this rerun. I still can't believe they named the tower Crackshot. You could say the name always cracks me up. Anyway, back in 1.3, Animo and Crackshot were both pretty much useless, but in version 2.0, that all changed when they introduced the Fortune Stick feature. It has that sort of gacha aspect to it, and at first it does put you off a little bit, but by the time you get to the third stage and so on, the feature just feels very suitable with the gameplay compared to the old upgrading single towers thing. Overall a very nice revamp to the event, making it one of my favorite events in all of Genshin so far. 4.5 out of 5. And last but not least, we got Phantom Flow, which is also a rerun. But since it is one of those last event type events, it was simply a time challenge with the new enemies from Inazuma, which gives us 60 Primos per challenge. There's really not much to say about this event other than thank you for the Primos, Mihoyo. Also, I would like to add that Nobushi, an enemy who is immune to CC, has elementals, and on top of that can heal, shouldn't be classified as easy enemies in the Adventurer's Handbook. 3 out of 5. We got tons of new features introduced in this version, but I'm just gonna focus on the main ones, starting with the most obvious being the new map expansion to the world of Teivat, Inazuma. Based on a classic old Japanese setting filled with shrines, sakura trees, and samurai, Inazuma is probably the biggest region out of the three we have right now. Not to mention, version 2.1 will further expand it more with features later. The atmosphere of the map itself is very different in comparison to Monset and Leeway, with Inazuma having that nostalgic yet mysterious feeling mixed in. The most notable feature added to the map is the Sacred Sakura Tree, which has 60 levels. Yes, you heard me right, 60 levels. Although for now you can only complete it up until level 20. The way to level it up is quite simple, yet tedious, which is by using Electro Sigils that you've collected around the map. Some chests are locked behind barriers however, and in order to obtain them is by using Electro Grana. Some barriers are stronger than others, so you need to level up your Sakura Tree up until level 17 in order to unlock the ability to go through those. With the new map comes new bosses, two to be exact, one being the Pyro Hypostasis, with its Pyro Shield and fairly quick attacks, and the other being the Perpetual Mechanical Array, with its long ass name and four minions spawning whenever you drain its health down to around half. Compared to the previously introduced Mago Kenki, both Pyro Hypo and Mechanical Array are pretty easy to beat in my opinion. A few other notable features include the ability to choose which region you would like your daily commissions to be at, which does help with some achievements being region specific, although you still need the luck to get said commissions in order to even attempt at getting or continuing the achievement progress. Two others include additional features for the Serenity Pot, which is a gardening system and being to finally put a TP waypoint. One tip I can give you is that you can now just TP to your pot instead of the previous way of opening your inventory, trying to place it down- Nope, something's in the way! and only then you can enter your pot. 
So yeah, that's quite a nice added change. Another has to do with wishing, specifically for the weapon event banners. You can choose which featured weapon you'd want to get, and if you don't get the one you want, you'll earn fate points, which goes up to two. After yoinking your fates for the upteen time not giving you the weapon you want, the next 5 star weapon you roll will be guaranteed to be the one you chose. With that said, it doesn't up the guarantee rate, so I'm wishing you all the best of luck. Lastly, for PlayStation players, a cross-save feature has finally been added, which allows you to play on all available platforms after you've linked your PSN account to a MiHoYo account. From the Shogun of Inazuma, Raiden herself, to Goro, version 2.0 introduced us to tons of new characters, all with different backgrounds. With that said, however, we only got three new playable characters. But before that... The continuation of the main story was by far the best we've had, even beating that of We Will Be Reunited. From having Beido and Kazuha help us get to Inazuma, to saving Toma from Raiden, the level of storytelling for Inazuma has been one hell of a ride. As a traveler, we are considered as outlanders. Luckily enough, Beidou's acquaintance, Toma, who helped us get through Rito Island in order to get into Inazuma City, is also a part of the Kamisato clan. After doing a lot of filler quests, we finally get to meet Ayaka and discuss the way to win against the Vision Hunt Decree. Toma, for some reason, was targeted and captured by the Shogun's underlings. We then jumped into action and lo and behold, met the Shogun Raiden herself and 1v1 to the death. Well, almost. We did succeed in rescuing Toma, however, with the cost of us also being wanted in Raiden's list. That's pretty much a very summed up version of what the main story was. Well, yes, there are still the resistance led by Kokomi, but I'm just gonna save that for the next update, seeing that we'll get more in the next act anyway. Overall, a really thrilling experience. Now then. Kamisato Ayaka. Mairimasu. The very long awaited character from the first ever beta test. Shirasagi Himegimi, or as we all know her by, Kamisato Ayaka. A cry of sword character whose sprint is better than Mona's and probably has one of the most broken C6 if you happen to have it. She's the daughter of the Yashiro Commission's Kamisato clan and happens to have her birthday right on the release day of Genshin. Also, you thought Noelle was clingy in both her hangout events? Bro, you have not seen Ayaka in her story quest. The quest immediately starts right after you've completed Act 2 of the Arkan Quest. It follows Ayaka's plan to try and meet her mother's friend, who she knew about from her old notes. Throughout the story, Ayaka's behavior gradually shows that she's very comfortable with the Traveler's company, especially at the end of the quest, after going to a festival with her. In short, great story, CG, voice acting, and overall great character. I ship Ayaka and Sora. We didn't get any story or even any mention of her before her initial character introduction video, but I can confidently say that Sayu is one of the most fun 4-star characters that you can ever own in this game so far. She's an animal claymore character with healing capabilities, which scales with her attack, meaning the more attack stat you have, the more healing she provides. What's unique about her is mainly her skill. And it's way easier for me to just show you guys than just talking about it. <laughs> See, what I tell you. I really do recommend to try and roll for her in the standard banner or whenever she appears in a future event banner. And lastly, the character that I simp the most this whole update has got to be Yoimiya, a pyro bow character whose playstyle is similar to Fischl's, which focuses on using her basic attack rather than skills and ults. And no, I don't simp her because of things you might be guessing right now. But the character itself, specifically her Osaka dialect. I swear, whenever she talks, I just have the tendency to just shut up and listen because of that sweet, sweet Osaka dialect. It's so good, it's so good. Not gonna lie though, since the only reason for me to get her was because of that, it wasn't enough to make me roll for her. That and the next banner being the Shogun herself, so. With that being said, I thoroughly enjoyed her story quest, even though it was filled with dialogues and only a few battle sequences. But all of that doesn't matter though, since I'm biased, and also to top it all off, the last CG was what really sold me the story the most. So there you have it. Version 2.0 was definitely a great intro update to Inazuma, and also a great intro towards what 2.1 has to offer. What did you guys think of the update? Is Inazuma your favorite region? Did you get any of the characters you wanted? Let me know in the comments below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. It's been Sage. 
and I will see you guys later. <laughs>